Hey there, guys. I hope everybody had a wonderful four-day weekend and you got to go out and enjoy this beautiful weather. Um, I got a little bit of a sunburn this weekend, but I'm okay. I got to go out and ride bikes with my daughter and take a walk. and It was absolutely gorgeous, and I hope everybody had a great, wonderful weekend. Okay, so this is our phonics lesson for Tuesday, April the 6th. And we are on lesson 19. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and get us get us started. Okay, so like I said, we are on lesson 19 in unit five today. And we are going to start with mixing it up a little bit today, okay? So like I'm going to say a word and I'm gonna tell you what we're changing with the word and then I want you to tell me what the new word is, okay? Now remember, this is just like when we did our phonics assessment a few weeks ago, so make sure you're paying really close attention, okay? Our first word is the word bunk. Bunk. We're going to change the mm sound to ul. The word is bulk. Very good. Our next word is mist. Mist. We're going to change the s to n. Yes, the word is mint. Very good. Our next word is the word booth. Booth. Now guys, I know these are really hard. So if you have a whiteboard or just a piece of blank paper and you can write down what you're hearing in your head and then mark off the part where I'm telling you to change it and write down what it's supposed to be and try to figure the word out that way, okay? I want you to listen, but if you need to write it down and have that visual, that's fine. You can do that, okay? So the next word is booth, booth. We're gonna change the th to t. So the new word is boot, very good. The next word is tusk, like an elephant tusk, tusk. So we're gonna change the s to k. Yeah, so the new word is just we don't actually have to change anything, did we? We just took out the sound. The next word is list, list. We're gonna change the s to mm. That's right, it's lint, good. The next word is sky, sky. And we're gonna change the k to So the new word is spy, good. The next word is melt, melt. We're gonna change the ol to mm. So it is meant, very good. Our next word is fox, fox. And we're gonna change the aw to i. Eh. What's the new word going to be? Yeah, it's gonna be fix, very good. Next is the word send, send. And we're gonna change the d to s. Good, the word is sense, nice. And then our last one is the word skimp, skimp. And we're gonna say it without the mmm. It is the word skip. Very good. All right, so now it's time to manipulate some phonemes. And we are going to substitute the first sound of the final blend, okay? So our first word is the word wimp, wimp. Let's stretch out the word wimp. We have w -m. We have four sounds in that word, w -m. And the m mm is the blend. So we're going to substitute the m mm with s. So now the new word is w is. 
What's the new word on the curve, guys? Wisp is the new word. Good. All right. Our next word is the word ramp. Ramp. Let's stretch that word out. How many sounds do you hear? Four sounds. R -am Good. And the m -p is the blend again. We're going to substitute the m for s again. So now we have a new word. What is the new word going to be? We have rasp. Rasp. Rasp is the new word. Our next word is the word mild. Mild. Stretch that word out. How many sounds do you hear? Four sounds. M Ild. The old is the blend part. And we're going to substitute the first sound of the blend, the o, with n. So now we have m ind. What's the new word on the curve? Mind is the new word on the curve. Very good. The next word is mold. Mold. How many sounds are in the word? Mold. M old. We have four sounds. M old. Good. We're going to change the old in that blend to n. See if you can figure out what that word is going to be now. Moaned. Very good. The word is moaned. The next word is pulp. Pulp. How many sounds are in the word pulp? We have four sounds. P ulp. The ulp is the blend. And we're going to change the ul to mmm. Mmm. What is the new word going to be? Pump. Very good. Our next word is the word drift. Drift. How many sounds are in the word drift? We have five sounds this time. Drift. Drift. Good. The ft is the blend. We're going to replace the ft sound with p. So now, what is that new word? Drift is the new word. Very good. The next word is loft loft how many sounds are in the word loft we have four sounds L -oft. what is the blend in this word the ft is the blend good we are going to replace the f with s. what is the new word going to be Good, it's lost. Very good. All right, next word is crest. Crest. How many sounds are in the word crest? Crest. There's five sounds. The st is the final blend of this word. We're going to replace the s with p. p, p. What's the new word going to be? Good, it's going to be crept. Very good. Our last word is hulk. Hulk. How many sounds are in the word hulk? Four sounds. Hulk. Very good. The ulk is the blend. We're going to replace the first sound, the ol, with mm. what's the new word on the curve? Hunk. Very good. All right, it's time for our spoonerism. All right, you guys ready? It is flell the smowers. Flell the smowers. What do you guys think that's supposed to say? Do you need to see it? Do you want to see it? Flell the smowers. What do you think? It is smell the flowers. Very good. 
OK, so our learning targets for today are I can identify a verb, verb tense and its vowel sound, and I can change verbs into the future tense. All right, so let's look at this first sentence. He wiggled his toes. What is the verb of this sentence? Which one is the action? Wiggled is the action, good. So is that verb wiggled something that happened in the present tense or the past tense? It happened in the past, that ED gives us the big clue that it happened in the past. So it is a past tense verb. So what is the vowel sound, the first vowel sound in the word wiggled? Yeah, it's the I, the I, iggled, good. All right, it is the I sound with the spelling I, like in the word it. So we learn to spell the sound I with the letter I. Look at the power bar, it is huge, guys. That tells us that it's almost always how we spell the I sound. Here is another sentence. They wait for the bus. What is the verb in that sentence? It is the word wait. Is that present tense or past tense? It is present tense. It's happening right now. Good. So what is the first vowel sound in the word wait? Yes, it's the A sound, very good. A, like the word wait. And it is spelt, this word is spelt with the A, I spell it. We learn to spell the A sound with the digraph A, I. Next sentence is, she likes me. What is the verb in that sentence? Likes, very good. Is it present tense or past tense? Is it happening now or did it happen in the past? It is present tense, it's happening right now. What is the first vowel sound in the word likes? It is the I sound, very good. We have the I sound with I consonant E spelling that we learned in the word bite. Very good. Our next sentence, sentence number three, we asked for directions. What is the verb? Asked is the verb. Is it present? tense or past tense? It happened in the past, that is right. And what gave that away? The ED, very good. So what is the first vowel sound in the word asked? It's the ah sound, like in pat. And look very closely, look at that power bar, it is huge. That tells us that's almost the only way to spell the A ah sound is with the letter A. Okay. I floated in the pool. What's the verb in that sentence? Yes, it's floated, very good. Is it present tense or past tense? There's a clue there. It's in the past. The ED is the clue. What's the first vowel sound in the word floated? Yes, it's the O sound, floated. Very good. And this one is spelt with an OA. We have learned to spell the sound O with OA. Although, look at the power bar. It's not very common, is it? Next sentence is, we eat dinner at six. 
what is the verb? Eight is the verb. Very good. All right, is it present or past? It's present. Very good. And what is the first vowel sound in the word eat? It's the E sound. Very good. And this way is spelled E-A, like in the word beach. We learn to spell the sound E with an E-A. And then our last sentence is, he cried. What's the verb in that sentence? That's cry. Very good. Is it present tense or past tense? It is past tense. We know because there is an ED, but remember when you have a word that ends with a Y, you have to change the Y to the I and add ED or ES. And this time we have to add ED and it is past tense. What is the first vowel sound in the word cried? It's the I sound and this time it's spelled with the IE. Very good. All right, so we have been studying present and past tense forms of verbs. What does it mean if something is in the past? Past tense means that the action has already happened. What does it mean if a verb is in the present tense? The present tense means that the action is happening right now. Like right now, you are watching this video, okay? On Thursday, you watched a video. All right, so the future tense, which is what we're going to talk about today, is made by adding the word will in front of the base form of the verb. So I swim something I'm doing right now, but if I'm going to do it tomorrow, I would say, I will swim. Okay, a future tense indicates the action will happen at some time in the future. It is going to happen. It has not happened yet, and it is not happening right now. So the future tense is much more regular, and it's much less complicated than the past tense. All right, so we are going to look at this worksheet and we're going to work on it together. Oops, hold on one second, okay, guys? Okay, so we are on worksheet 19.1. And we're going to do the first part of this together. We're going to change the present tense verbs to future tense. Okay. So the first one says, I swim. We did this in the video, in the lesson together. I swim is the present tense, but in the future, I will swim. So in the present tense, I sleep. But if I'm going to do it later, I would say, I will sleep. The next one says, I fish. But if I'm going to do it next weekend, I would say, I will fish. I eat is present tense. But if I'm going to do it on Saturday, I'm going to say, I will eat. I dress is something that I would do now. Like I put on my clothes, I dress. But if I'm going to do it tomorrow morning, I would say, I will dress, okay? So we're not gonna do, I'm not gonna have you guys do this on your own. We're just gonna do it together. Um, when I grow up, I will. What I want you to do is I want you to think about something that you were gonna do when you grow up or something you want to do when you grow up. And I want you to use this prompt when I grow up, I will, so here's an example. When I grow up, I will go to California and see the redwood trees, okay? So I want you to use this sentence prompt 
and I want you to tell your learning partner or tell your neighbor or tell your brother or sister, whoever's beside you, or your mom or your dad, or your grandma or your aunt or uncle, whoever it is that's near you. Tell me what you are gonna do when you grow up and use that prompt. When I grow up, I will. So go ahead and pause the video, do the sentence and then hit play. Hey. So our learning targets for today were I can identify a verb, the verb tense, and its vowel sounds, and I can change verbs into the future tense. So you guys did all of that today. I do want to show you, you have grammar practice today, you have extra practice, and it's broken up into sections. So for the first one, you're just going to circle the word that is the noun for one, two, and three. Four, five, and six, you're going to circle the nouns that name a person. Seven, eight, and nine, you're going to circle the nouns that name places and things. You're going to circle the nouns that name a thing and put a line under the nouns that name a place. So 10, 11, and 12, you're going to circle the word in the parentheses that correctly completes the sentence. 13 through 17, over here on the, the side, you're going to retype the underlined word correctly. 18 to 22, you're going to type each word and make it plural, more than one. 23 through 28, you are going to circle the nouns that name more than one. So there's a bug flying around. If, there, if it does not name more than one, you're going to leave it alone. You're only going to circle the ones that name more than one. And then 29 through 33, you're going to put the noun that's in the parentheses as a plural. So over beside it, use your text box and type it out to make it plural. 34 to 39, you're going to retype the word. Remember, these are the irregular plurals. You're gonna to have to change the word. So you're gonna retype it correctly over to the side. 40 to 44, you are going to retype the sentence correctly. There are titles and dates in there that you need to fix. And then the last part, 45 to 50, you're going to make compound words. You're going to take a word from the left column and a word from the right column and squish them together, make a compound word. And then you're going to type it in here using a text box on each rectangle to tell me the six compound words that you've created. Okay. And that is your um, work for today. You have spelling work that you're going to do today. You are going to take all 15 of your words and you are going to make a chart in your journal on page 60. Your spelling words all have a Y in them this week, okay? And you are going to decide, does the Y say Y? Does it say I? Does it say I? or does it say E? And then you have one that doesn't fit that category at all and it's gonna go in the other section, okay? And you're gonna put the words in the box where it belongs with the sound that the Y makes, okay? And that is your spelling for this today. Stop sharing. Try that again, stop share, there we go. Okay, so you have take these off now. You have spelling work to work on and you have grammar, but you don't have any phonics worksheets to work on, okay? So um, just spelling and grammar and um, that's it. I hope you guys have a great afternoon and I will see you later. Bye.